What's up guys, Lama5 here, also known as Joker. It is very late where I am right now, I had a bit of a slow day and a fast day, a lot of mixed things, and I don't know why I've been a bit slow today, just a bit tired, maybe it's all the sugar, but a lot of wonderful things have happened today, and one of them being this episode. I mean, my goodness, I have so much to talk about, I'm gonna get to the final note, so before I start, I want to say as usual that... Obviously, not going to use any clips from the actual episode in the review because I find that distracting. And also, I, this is just my thoughts. I'm not trying to impress anybody with visuals or anything. I just put the title card, which I haven't made yet. But the title card is just there to... Because I like drawing them. <laughs> That's it. But I don't like to be fancy. I put them up just so they can... People can see my thoughts, you know. And obviously, if I put them with clips, there's a chance they'll be taken down, which defeats the entire purpose of me putting them up. There's probably something else I forgot to say, because I usually say two things, forgotten the other thing, but I want to talk about this episode. I love it so much. Without further ado, let's get to it! So, first I want to say, and it is nice when they reveal that Cloudsdale can, you know, move about, you know, explains a lot of things like how, you know, it makes it rain in certain areas, how they gather the rain, how it moves about, you know. And, you know, maybe I should have done it, but it's more of the sense that... You know, they never said to her before. I'm glad that they did. Just the small little side thing. You're just glad that they did. It's really nice. And um, it kind of does show now that it has been a year, you know, since it's now before the winter wrap-up. And also the falling of the leaves thing, you know, I like that reference to that old episode, Fall Over Friends. And technically it makes sense, because it has been four seasons. We're on to the season five, so it's season one again, so have been a whole year. Four seasons in a year. <gasps> Whatever show does that, I don't know. Not mine. Not mine. I don't do that. My seasons don't work like that, but really lovely touch there. Oh, so much good stuff in this episode. I love it. I will make love to this episode if it had things to make love to. I will nuzzle its animation or something. <laughs> Sorry. And the episode does do, oh yeah, all around and the favorite part, this is, oh, there's so much stuff, but definitely my favorite part, and you're going to see me mention this a lot because I mentioned this all in my notes. That the episode does a great, fantastic job of showing the relationship between Rainbow Dash and Tank. Just, ooh. And then, not only does it, you know, just show, you know, the relationship between the two characters as a whole, but it also explains and makes all the negative stuff she does in the episode, you know, very believable, which, in my opinion, is hard to pull off. So, kudos to the writers, because, you know, when a character does negative things, like, I know in putting your hoof down... I mean, I don't, I can understand it, you know, I don't find a problem with it, but a lot of people, even Josh Gorcher and uh, Mysterious Mr. Hunter, they say that, oh, Fluttershy would never do that, or, you know, because it is hard to show a character be out of character, you know, when they're going for extreme emotions, but this episode, I feel, has done a really good job. They, I mean, I don't say that they did bad in putting your hoof down, but I say they did a really good job here, like, oh my goodness, maybe they need to do more stuff like this, you know, maybe that's a little writing tip that I've learned and even you've learned. You explain what a character is willing to do for someone, or how extreme their emotions can get through someone else. Wonderful. Wonderful. No, no, no impressions. We're going to try and go through an entire review about doing any impressions, Joker. Well, we've already failed, haven't we? Oh. And <laughs> just another side note, I love Dash's extreme fantasy boss with the sledding and the hockey, and then Tan just catches the hockey book with his mouth. I love that. I love... And speaking of, I love all the animation on Tank this episode in general, like... When he first appeared, he was a bit slow all around, and at the end, he got that counter. And they really show this episode just what they can do. I mean, he's not really that little enemy. He's got like five joints, but just from that one little counter, and where he bumps into things, and then where he moves around, and there's ah, oh, just, just absolutely incredible how they just shown, you know, not many limbs, not many points of articulation, but you can still so much just from that one little counter on his little head. I mean, not on his shell, ah. Oh, one little side note, this is one of the only negative things I'm going to mention. They aren't really that terrible. I mean, you see the rating I give in this episode, you'd be like, was there any negative ratings? Uh, just a little side note, actually it's kind of uh, interesting thing as well, that when Twilight comes up to Dash, when Dash is like, is, is Tank okay? And she's like, oh, he's tired, same as usual. But her wings are freaking huge. Like, especially because Rainbow Dash is the brat in there for comparison. They're just, boom, like celestial size, and that's the whole point. I'm wondering... Is Twilight going to get bigger throughout the season and eventually become, like, almost as big as Celest I mean, Celestia? Because that would make sense, except for Cadence, though Cadence was, Cadence was kind of adopted and given the powers under them. They haven't explained why Cadence is a, you know, Alicorn. And Luna, obviously, we can see that, you know, she hasn't got real princess qualities. So maybe Twilight is going to get to Celestia's kind of level in that 
wingspan, that huge stance and size. Maybe that. I really like that. I like that. And also, I like how it shows or or it tells what hibernation is. You know, a bit, and also how they show how they actually make winter. I mean, I'm glad they didn't focus too much on it, you know, and they just made it one side, they're like, here's how hibernation works, okay. And, you know, obviously there's a point to it, and also the point for winter as well, you know. They made everything in this episode, you know, have a point to it. It's not like, you know, they went, oh, by the way, we're making winter in the background, or, oh, here's how hibernation works. No, you know, hibernation's the whole point of why Raymond Nash is doing this, and the reason why hibernation is needed is because winter is coming, you know. All falls into place, very nice. Oh, my head's hurting a bit, all that sugar. Oh, I don't even know where it came from. Yeah, it's weird because I only have one meal today. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why my head hurts that much today. And as as mentioned before, or well, not really as a not really necessary to but no one's talking about how making her negative actions believable. Um, that's just also denial. Not really a negative action, but you know how she snaps at her friends. You know, it's very understandable and I believe really well written. You know, at times it is a little hard to sit through, you know, her snapping at the friends and being angry. But that's the whole idea, you know, that's the whole point. I'll get to that right now. The anger and frustration that Dash builds throughout the entire episode not only shows what she's going through, but it also makes her actions, as I said before, very believable. And also how it affects her friends, you know, seeing her go through all these emotions the same way when we're watching, you know. And that's the whole idea, you know. We're meant to be feeling the same way that Twilight and the rest are feeling, you know. It's like, oh god, what's going on, you know, send that negative through, because misery loves company, I guess. Maybe it doesn't mean the same thing here, but you get the idea, you know. It's making us feel worried about Dash, you know, or have that extreme emotion affect us as well. That's the whole point. Very nice, very lovely. I'm sure a lot of people like, oh, I didn't like when Rainbow Dash and we saw the character. Well, I say it was very well in character. I say that is absolutely beautiful, this episode, and why it... Whoever wrote this episode, you are freaking amazing. Can I hire you to do all the things? Probably not. <laughs> uh, well, I like writing myself. I don't like to... See my anime, but... And... <laughs> oh, God, the comedy this season is just perfect. Because the, the Sky Names joke is like, Where's Open Skies? I'm Open Skies, but Open Skies are blurred. No, Clear Skies is up here. And where'd all our floppy clouds go? There you go, he's down there. It's like, uh, who was on first? <laughs> Uh, who was on stage? You see the band? No, that's not the band. The band is on for later. Right now we're listening to who? I don't know. Those kind of jokes never get old with me. And I love how they do play around with the fact that they have such ridiculous names. You know, they can play off that really well. Ah, uh, just amazing. Hope you can't hear. See, people are awake. It's just, it is late here. It's like half 11. So I'm going to do this. And I'm going to draw the thing. I'm very late. I've been so many hours just sleeping. But, uh, the song this episode. Oh. You know, thinking back on it, this is a... Yeah. You know, and I fly, and I fly. And the reason why I remember that is not because it's catchy or memorable. That's why I say here in my notes. The song isn't memorable or catchy, but it is really amazing. I just love it. I love, you know, I, don't, I can't remember any actual songs I remember Dash has sung, but I'll definitely remember this one because it shows the emotions and the thoughts of Dash while she's, you know, trying to stop Winter itself, you know, which works really well, you know, better than having her do it in small scenes, which helps pace the episode, you know, it's better to do it in the... No montage, you know, it's not like, you know, playing up music, it's... The song's also showing her emotions, what she's thinking, what she's going through, and even on the side, you know... Developing a relationship with Tank, which is weird, when I think about it. Like, they did so much, they developed the entire relationship so really well in just one episode. It's like, that is really hard to do. I'm gonna say right now, that is incredibly hard. Again, real close, I'm, as I said at the beginning, I'm gonna say so much about the relationship between Tash and Tank. It's just... <laughs> so beautiful. No, don't cry again. You cried earlier, that's why you had to stop when writing these notes. Yeah, spoilers, I cried this episode twice. Ugh. So yeah. Not only the little through dialogue, actions, and song, but I noticed that their relationship is also shown amazingly well for the animation. You know, during the song, And I Fly, I think it's the second time she says, you know, she's grabbing onto a Tank by his feet and then just swinging around in the midair. I just, I just really love showing all that. I think it really just pulls through and showing their relationship to each other. Ah, it's just... Ah, I need to stop talking about it. I love it. I love this episode, man. Ooh, ooh, come on, come on, come on, get back on track. Get your mind on straight, sir. And also, I love... I love Dash's little leash that she gets for Tank. Because not only does it make... It makes his animation and his movement just more adorable than funny. How he's, like, banging things just because he's attached to Dash. And now it, it's just a little leash. And Dash is a little tangy. And he's so cute and adorable. Oh... 
I never thought I'd make that noise this episode. <laughs> never thought I'd make that in my life, but... Uh, I am another negative point is that why doesn't at least one or a few guards or people, scientists, whatever, stick around to keep an eye on the dangerous and delicate equipment in Cloudsdale? You know, this is stuff that, you know, get, you know, makes winter. This is clouds. This is what stuff that's making snowflakes. Like, someone should be keeping an eye. You know, like, stick around a lot. Like, hey, I'll go grab your sandwich for lunch hour. Okay, thanks. I'll keep an eye on him. He's here. Or guards, you know, that's their job. Look over stuff. You know, there's no CCTV, so stick around, man. And it's a really shame, because I wish there was a scene where Dash tricks or anticipates the guards. Because that would have been something that she would have done. It also would have added more negative actions, you know, like her tripping them up or going like, Hey, what's that over there? And like locks them on the warm room. Like, that would have been something really nice. Uh, also, very subtle teaching of how clouds are made, you know, it's like, And here's water! So now I'll get rid of this, and they can't make the clouds. Like, they don't fully really explain it, which is... Good, you know, focus more on the actual pacing. Like, she's not going to go, here's how it's done, here's how this is done. Though she's like, oh, here's the water, now they can't make clouds, huh? Which, maybe it'll make some kids actually wonder. Like, they'll ask their parents, like, Mom, how does water make clouds? And they'll go, well, I'll tell you. You know, that's really nice. Nice little touch. And the domino effect, with, you know, when Dash tries to save Tank from the fight, and then she goes flying, and then she goes into the land, and then she's covered in snow, and then Tank bounces off the thing, and then she goes into go the lightning, and the lightning goes everywhere. <sighs> It was funny and believable, as the fact that, you know, it doesn't, like, some dome effects are really hard to pull about, making them look forced, like, oh, yeah, they, that would not happen, they wouldn't, but they did have well here, it did really well here, for the animation, and then how the domino effect works, but I think they could have been much faster, and it would have not only given room for that little guard tricking scene, but also that's how, you know, that's how comedy or slapstick is done better, you know, for a fast combinations, and how the domino effect is more believable. Because obviously, if you, they've got time to react to the things, but no, it was like, ah, oh, what, oh, what, oh, what, oh, oh, you know. Trust me, I've done it. I've done comedy acting, and I've done animation. I sound very pretentious right now. It's all stuff. Uh, so I like the transition transition of the instant winter and the, you know, the anvil of irony. It's like, she was trying to stop it, but because she was trying to stop it, it instantly came. Uh, but yeah, even though it, it was a bit cheap to just... Flash white and then, oh, here it is now, but to be honest, there is a lot of area they show at that point. That's like a really wide shot of all that land, you know, all the Ponyville and that, so I still think it was a really nice transition. Okay, here we go. The Dash crying scene, oh no. But before that, I do love how Dash is coping with things, Silent Weird Tank, you know, when she's just laying on the bed with him with those adorable little slippers. <gasps> oh, man. There. You know, she's just silent. Like, you know, she's not pacing, she's not crying like rarity wants oh. you know she's just having a little silent time with tank you know she's not saying oh she's gonna do this she's gonna have to do that she's just there she's just on her own you know i, I really love silent things like that you know silent moments and i wish it was a little bit longer just a little settle in just like you know just dash looking down at tank you know not, not like that eye to eye mode just like just showing her like mm. you know make it seem more a bit more powerful i mean it's better than pinkie pie walking and going yes you know, read the situation, Pinky Bye. Pinky Bye, bleh. <sighs> also, I know a lot of people, or some people, I'm just guessing here. Not so, it's not, I know. I'm gonna guess that quite a few people are going to not like Fluttershy's talk in this scene. How she's, you know, like, like, Rainbow Dash, you're gonna have a pet this winter. And actually, I think that was a really great scene. I thought that was a really great dialogue moment, because Fluttershy's tough love is great, you know. It's well written, believable, and remember. She learnt that from the Breezy's episode. So, <gasps> development! <gasps> we mentioned that before. We mentioned on the other reviews that you should watch. But, if you haven't seen them. Yeah, that, surprising a lot of development in Season 5. Oh, so much promise! <clears throat> uh, so, so much better than last episode. Stupid Apple Bloom. Well, not stupid Apple Bloom, but like stupid writers. Making Apple Bloom dream, all that. And, Dash is crying. Oh, man. It is absolutely fantastic. And sad. That's what makes it fantastic, because it's just so hard to sit through. And that's the whole point. They did it. Because it sounds so real. Like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, let's have silent crying. It's like, <laughs> and tears from that. But no. If you remember, if you have ever cried, if you haven't cried before, I'm not going to believe you. If you haven't seen someone crying before, again, I'm not going to believe you. So at least a bit to one of those. Then you'll know that when people cry... It's not a pretty sight or a silent moment. Like, it's real sobbing, real... <laughs> like, they look... Everyone looks terrible when they cry. 
because remember that's all your it's just so much motions going through your head and it's really done well here like I didn't expect Rainbow Dash to ever cry but I did it's just uh, uh, and I you know when Applejack said you know when it's like oh don't worry he'll be back in a few months and she's like she, when shouldn't you know should be about when she has to go oh when is she gonna be done and Pleasure is like, oh, she should be down any second now. Like, I, I did not like that. It's like, oh, you, you were doing so well there. This was such a perfect scene. And then you go and, ah, and it gets a little worse. But, you know, it shouldn't be, you know, the response to how do we stop her, it should have been like, you know, remember that she needs to cry. You know, she's going to let it all out. You know, she, this is how she's going to get over it. She needs to be strong. We've got to be strong for her. And we're going to, and she can take as long as she wants because that's the whole point. Every pony crying, you know, when Pinkie Pie starts and then Rarity starts and bloody shy starts. It was a bit silly, like I think they shouldn't have done that, but it still made me cry, man. I mean, you made bloody shy and Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie cry at the same time. How's a man supposed to handle that? Come on, come on, come on. Come on. But why didn't they make. Why didn't they make Twilight cry? Like, they never explain that. It's like, why aren't you... They played it for a comedic moment, and, you know, it's like, Applejack cries on the inside. Yep. It's like, no, that is very stupid. It seems like they just did it for a joke, and it's that's a really terrible time for jokes. I'm sorry. This episode was doing so well. Like, you don't need to include... You know, like, that's still a joke with the whole, you know, and the, oh, where's Open Skies? No, I'm Open Skies. That was good. That was good. That was like, you know, to distract them from what Rainbow Dash was doing. No, that plays him well, but when it's... Done for a delicate moment like that. Don't make jokes, no matter how tempting it is or how I think it fits well. No, don't, don't ever do that. Never. Once ever so would have been a ten out of ten without that. I'm, I'm honest now. You know the guards bit didn't bother me that much. Uh, or moments. It was just this one bad joke that was very badly timed. It was stupid. Would have been a ten out of ten if it wasn't for that. Oh, you already know the red. Oh, maybe you don't. You know it's high. You know it's. Of course you know it was high. Ah, come on. We're at seventeen minutes. I was at the end, and uh, just the animation on the Tank again, showing the relationship, you, when Rainbow Dash just puts her hoof down and then Tank just makes that little smile and he puts his, po he puts his, he puts his foot on her and then they look up there and it's just, uh, <laughs> oh man, no Bond episode will make me cry this much, man. Uh, oh, I didn't know really. Oh. I love, and finally, just last two notes here before the final thoughts. I love every pony's unique winter clothes. You know, it's not like basic stuff. You know, already has got that weird Russian hat, and plush has got the thing. Applejack's just wearing a coat with her usual hat. It's, I really like that. I hope they go for more of that route of unique clothing when it comes to stuff. I can't even think straight now. Oh, oh. Come on, I the final thoughts. You can't. You need to think straight during the final thoughts and not start letting tears run down. Oh, and Tank's goodbye scene. It was, it was very gentle and quiet. You know, it was very nice into the episode. You know, it wasn't like you know, goodbye Tank. It was like, okay, bye. And she sticks around to read him away. You know, nice gentle pull out. That was very nice. And here we go, final thoughts. Eighty minutes. You see, when there's nothing bad in an episode and it's just doing this really nice gentle run through, it doesn't last as long. Time flies when you're having fun. Ooh. Yeah, not only do I think this is the best Rainbow Dash episode ever, or so far, I doubt anything will beat this, but I, so I'm going to say ever, and it's actually definitely going to be in my, if I ever have to do a top 10 episodes of this, this is definitely going to be in the top 5 at least, just because it was, it blew me away that much, it surprised me, it did, you know, as I said so many freaking times, it was a fantastic job showing relationship between Dash and Tank, you know, it really made you feel the strength and bond between them, despite the fact that Tank can only express himself through these slow movements and his animation. And, ah, uh, just absolutely fantastic. In fact, because of this episode, Dash is now my second favorite character. Obviously, Pinkie Pie is still number one, but just because of this one episode. I mean, I can tell you right now, Rainbow Dash was not only my least favorite member of the main six, yes, Applejack is number five, but also, she was really not even like her. She wouldn't even been in my top ten list at all. But because of this episode, she made it to number two. Like not even on top ten characters, but watch this episode, bam, number two. That's how blown away I was by how well written it was, how the animation was, how everything just plopped into each other. The oh man, just fantastic. Mm. 
and the episode itself just feels really fresh, you know. Just, I don't know, like, not only did it bring back my hope for season 5, but I feel like it, I don't know, deep in the subconscious of my head, I'm thinking they have done this before. They have shown someone doing these rough actions just to make sure nothing bad happens to this one, but... But when trying to think about it and my emotions running high like this, I can't think of a single time they tried to do this in the episode, so very well done for the writers here for tackling something new which feels like it isn't new. It feels like they've done this before, but it feels like they haven't. It's just fantastic. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, man. Now bring on the man to stop the tears. Yeah, come on. Yeah. I shouldn't be shouting this late at night, but people are walking about, so they're probably awake. Yeah, I'm hoping, because they actually did show, you know, the winter coming and all that, I'm hoping they actually do do two episodes in winter, at least, like, at least two, maybe more, because, you know, season one and even season two felt a bit dragged, like, it's always in the same setting, like, oh, there's always grass, or maybe there's a bit of waste, but, you know, it's time that they had a little more, you know, winter pony build, just to show what happens in winter, you know. Just, just a little help. Just a little help. That I'm having a lot of right now because of this episode. Yeah, you know, this episode itself, you know, I really love how they did, at least for once. Maybe that's why she moves so far from Rack, was they showed Dash's more emotional and human side this episode rather than, you know, her extreme stuff. Like, you know, oh, it looks like between me. Oh, yeah, I'm so cool. I saved your scoots, even though this is your episode. Oh, yeah. It's really a nice change. Really loving it. Absolutely fantastic. In fact, now I definitely want to cosplay as Rainbow Dash for Bronicon now, just because of this. I need to find some way to make Tank part of the cosplay. Oh, man. And overall, this episode just really makes me believe that Season 5 can prove me wrong on how they can't do anything new with the main six. Because I was saying that all the time. I was When everyone asked me about my thoughts, I was like, well, I hope that they do other actual characters like Princess Celestia, Princess Luna, maybe Sakura. Because I was saying, they've t done so much already with the rest of the main six. It's like, if they do an episode, it's going to be the same thing. You know, like, oh, another Fluttershy Shab episode, another Rainbow Dash is wrecked this episode. But, you know what? They proved me wrong. And I hope there's going to be more episodes that do prove me wrong in the future. You know, because that was the breezy episode did that as well. I was really blown away by that. So hopefully more episodes like that where it can prove me completely wrong. Just smack me in the face like they did with this episode. And make me love this series and its characters even more. Really fantastic episode. Not only the best of season 5, but probably one of the best. Like I said, at least top 5. And now I'm thinking at least top 2 after just saying all this. Oh man, so... This entire review was a complete love letter to the episode and to the writers. I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. Hopefully you felt the same way. If not, I would love to discuss it with you. Not argue, discuss. Maybe they're the same thing, but that's a matter of opinion, and that's the whole point of a review. One long opinion. So, thank you for watching. If you like this stuff, more on the channel, stay subscribed, and more reviews will come out. Thank you for watching. This is Loma5, also known as Joker, saying bye-bye. Later. This episode.